So is Jonathan Taylor all the way back, and is he primed to lead his fantasy football owners to a league championship after some drastic inefficiencies and disappointments the first half of the season? This is the Fantasy Sports Boss, where they stock watch video. I wanted to take a closer look at Jonathan Taylor, who I personally am invested in. Uh, one of my two leagues, I had the top overall pick, as many of you already know. Uh, debated all summer between Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson, CMC, and Taylor. Wound up going with Taylor. And certainly week one uh, looked like to be the right decision. 27.5 fantasy points. He ran for 161 yards and a touchdown. Uh, but then from that point on, the wheels completely fell off. Uh, week two, seven fantasy points. Week three, 12 fantasy points. Week four, three fantasy points. And then he missed two games with an ankle injury. Uh, comes back for two more uh, you know, two more games. One where he put up 15 points, which was a decent outing. And then uh, another dud. Uh, with five, and then missed another game with renewed ankle problems. So uh, after nine weeks, Jonathan Taylor looked to be as big of a fantasy bust as you uh, could possibly imagine and likely dragged down a lot of fantasy football teams in its wake. However, starting November t uh, uh, 13th, week 10, against the uh, Las Vegas Raiders when Taylor made his return, uh, for the last three games uh, since his return, he looks like the number one overall pick, Jonathan Taylor. So against Las Vegas um, in, in week 10 there on November 13th, 22 carries for 147 yards and a touchdown. Uh, the following week against the Eagles, 22 carries for 84 yards and a touchdown. And then, of course, last night against Pittsburgh, 20 carries, 86 yards, and another touchdown with uh, a batch of uh, receptions in each game thrown in. So 24 fantasy points uh, against the Raiders, 16 against the Eagles, 18 against the Steelers. Jonathan Taylor looks like he's all the way back from his ankle trouble. And I brought up the, the reference to Saquon Barkley a number of years ago when he had a high ankle sprain midway through his season, missed like three or four games. And then, you know, it looked like uh, he was going to go down as a colossal bust, comes back for the stretch run of the season, goes absolutely bonkers, plays like the uh, a number one overall fantasy pick that he was that season in many leagues. And personally helped me win a league and helped win many other uh, leagues as he went absolutely ballistic in the fantasy football playoffs, uh, and even more so in the fantasy football Super Bowl week. So can Jonathan Taylor do that this season? I think he could. You know, he's got Dallas in week 13, which is, you know, certainly not an easy assignment. Um, then, then gets a, you know, an ill time bye in week 14. I've already talked about by Mageddon. Uh, but then December 15th against Minnesota. Uh, then he has the Los Angeles Chargers, who everybody can run against uh, in the semifinals of the fantasy football playoffs. And then how about this one? In the Super Bowl fantasy football week, he gets the New York Giants. So while Minnesota is not the easiest, um, you know, uh, assignment because you can you beat them through the air, not on the ground. Uh, the the Chargers in the semis and the Giants in the final. Those are as good fantasy matchups as you could possibly get for Jonathan Taylor. I think he's going to come through. There's no competition for touches right now in this backfield. Naheem Hines is in Buffalo. Uh, Deion Jackson's not doing anything, not even getting any opportunities. This is the Jonathan Taylor show. He looks up to the task. I think there's going to be a big finish here for his owners. All right, hit that subscribe, hit the notification button. I'm going to be going live later to discuss the waiver wire um, uh, Tuesday. A lot of running backs worth discussing. I'm going to tell you who I, who I prioritize over the others, so tune in for that.